Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased price action analysis. Cool. Look at that dark pool level. Look at that dark pool level. 448.8, 1 billion in premium. We got any more? Okay, 445.67, 2.2 2 billion in premium. Let's look at the spy chart. Look at that. The low was 445.4-ish, 0.7-ish, right around the dark pool level. The high was at 448.8-ish, right around the dark pool level. This is why I love dark pool. Someone asked me, Do you, is Cheddar Flow worth it? I think it's worth it because you get dark pool levels. You get information. You can see where the big money is placing their bets. You can see where the big money is you know, putting their money, where they're entering. All right, we use the dog pool level, then we combine it with our trading strategy, our style, you know. But that's dog pool level, okay? I find it very useful, so definitely watch those levels, 448.8 and 445.4. Watch that zone, guys. That's the dog pool levels where the institution are placing their liquidities, if you will, all right? Now... That's dog pool orders. Let's do some price action analysis. And I'm, I'm going to give you some price action trade ideas. Sheep style. That means unbiasedly we are followers of the price action. The world will teach you that being a follower is a bad thing. But here in Uncle Charter's channel, being a follower is a good thing. It's a good thing. We have to change our mindset and not think like the majority. We have to think like the minority. I'm talking numbers here, not about race. Okay, this is trading. Now, how do I want to start this? First of all, we had some great level-to-level uh, -level style move intradays. I mentioned to you guys yesterday, guys, pre-CPI, we're going to get some chop. That's exactly what we got. Down move, up move, down move. What is a chop? Up, down, up, down. That's a chop, guys. We got the chop. However, today's chop was pretty nice. Some chops, they have very tight range, untradeable. Okay, today's chop was very nice. All right, I missed this setup because I had to take my kids to the dentist. But I gave the plans and the levels to everybody, including my viewers on YouTube. 448.5 broke down right here. You guys see that? That was the first setup. Tested it as resistant. Couldn't break it, you know, break back above recapture. It just showed follow through. Hit 447. And then... On the 15-minute chart, we broke down 447. That was the trigger to go short. It's short. Look at that. Level, level. Move to 445.5-ish level. And then what happened? This candle right here closed below my 445.5 level. It closed below. This candle right here closed back above my 445.5 level. Keep in mind, these were alerted in the group, the 447 of, and a breakdown in the 445.5. Recaptured, that's a false breakdown setup, the greatest trade setup of all time. And look at that, boom, boom, boom. From false breakouts to false breakdown, yes, that breakdown of 448.5 was a false breakout because you see on the previous day, we cleared that level. And then the mo next morning, we broke it down. That was a false breakout setup followed by a false breakdown setup. You see how these chop days are? Range bound, I tell you. Range bound between the range is full of traps. But me and you, us, trap traders, if you've been watching Uncle Charters' this content for a while, you know the trap trading style. We play false breakouts. We play false breakdowns. We are not victims to uh, the traps. We play these traps. False breakouts, false breakdowns. So that's what I advocate on this channel a lot. That's the only trading strategy you really need. But of course, there's millions of trading strategies. You guys pick what you like. This is what I roll with. Anyways, we got CPI tomorrow. All right, people talk about, Uncle, you never talk about fundamentals. Yes, I do. I just, I don't talk about it a lot. And I only talk about the ones that matters to me. And CPI happens to be one of them. Now, keep in mind, this is a price action channel. I have to connect this information to price action. People will tell you, and with all oh, this CPI tomorrow, and they'll tell you what to expect, what not to expect, and blah, 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 and they give you all these fundamental stuff. Great, cool stuff, and you find value in that, great, but guess what? The money is made in the trading, and that is where I focus. That is where Uncle Chart is the, the, the
the sheep. He, that's where he comes in. Goodness gracious, I should not have drank coffee before I started this video. But I did it anyways. Hallelujah. So here it is, guys. Expectation. All right? Expectation is 3.3% for tomorrow for the inflation. They are expecting it to rise. Not by much, but they are expecting it to rise. Okay? Now, as traders, it's not about the data. It's about the price action's reaction to the data. It's about the data serving as a catalyst so we can get some tradable moves. That's where we need to focus. Now, if you're thinking as a citizen of this country, of course, you know, look at this data. You wanted the inflation to go down and blah, 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 all that happy stuff, right? But we have to approach this as traders. How can, what are we going to do with this information? How can we trade it? Well, we do know that on CPI days, it's very trappy. It's very volatile. So, on these days, on these day to days, it's not the time to be biased, guys. You got to be open because the main thing is about making money, not being right on our predictions. Okay? So we know CPI is going to cause some volatility to the upside, to the downside. We will see that will be, that's, that remains to be seen. Okay? Now, another thing I want to say about CPI is there is a tendency. It doesn't happen all the time. It didn't really happen on the last CPI. But previous CPI, there's been a lot of them, and it happens more time than not. There are reversals, okay? There are reversals. The initial reaction to CPI is usually the fake one followed by the real move. So watch out for those false breakouts and false breakdowns tomorrow, okay? I'm going to give you the levels. You guys should have my levels already, but I'm going to give you it again because I got to make sure, okay? So you guys can know when to pivot, where the pivot levels are so you can reference when we have a false breakout, when we have a false breakdown, if we have them. Because for all we know, the market can trend and we can always trade with the trend. If there's going to be no traps and the market makes up its mind, don't argue with the price action, as I say, okay? So CPI tomorrow forecast is 3.3. They're expecting it to rise. If it rise more than that, there's a chance we could get a rug pull. We could drop to the downside to lower levels. If it doesn't uh, rise... You know, if it meets the expectation or it may be lower where CPI don't go as high or increase as high, might be bullish, guys. Now, keep in mind, everything you hear me say and take it with a grain of salt, I am not a fundamental guy. You guys got to check out Clear Tax Value. Go check out uh, Financial Juice. Uh, go check out that Ricky guy. I, I forgot his name, the Ricky guy. I'm, he's covered these kind of things. You know, they're great people. Now, let's go to my expertise. Let's go where Uncle Chad is, is good at, the price action, all right? So, got to watch these levels, okay? We got this wedge or flag, whatever you want to call it. The point is it's a pattern. Or like a lot of you guys like to say, or, you know, the guy from uh, Eric. Yeah, Eric from the Spy Day Trading Channel. Very great content. If you guys didn't subscribe to him yet, go subscribe to him. But as he liked to say, structure. We got structure right over here. I'm going to stop saying that because I don't want to copy other people, but shout out to Eric. Definitely subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's great content. So we got this pattern right here that has formed. You guys can see that the market has respected it. It's respecting it. Okay. And look where it bounced. No coincidence. All right. Obviously you guys should know what the bearish setup is. Now we were taught that this kind of pattern is a bullish pattern, but Hey, I've seen so many times where these bullish patterns end up being bearish okay so be neutral as long as we are within this pattern obviously a breakout would be bullish but hey a breakdown could be very bearish and the breakdown for tomorrow is around 444 that's right 444 which also happens to be around the june high 444 is a critical pivot level bulls must keep price above it if they fail this breakout that we had, the June high breakout, that is a false breakout. That's an incredible false breakout based on the higher time frame. It could be very, very, very bearish. So we got an area of confluence, got this structure, and the highs of June, okay? Breakdown 444, bears are in control. However, we play it level to level. 442.5 is the gap fill over here, back from July. Then I got some fib levels, 441, 439, 437.5, 436, 434. What else I got? Uh, 432.4, 431, and 429.6. That's a critical level, okay? I'm giving you guys some extra levels here. Please add this to your charts because we could get 
possibly, and I'm hoping we do, some decent, really good moves. All right, nothing like NVDA, of course, but for SPY, we could get some very nice move. Five, ten dollar move, I'm hoping, okay? Now, that's the bearish case scenario. You break down 444, bearish. Now, resistant, first support, first support is at 445.5, of course, but resistant is at 447, all right? And then above that is 448.5, and then above that is 450. Point seven, and then above that is 452 and the breakout of this wedge is at 452.8 all right please add those levels to your chart above 452.8 it's bullish and it would put 455 456.5 458 and 460 in play above 460 i got 462 please add these levels to your charts cpi tomorrow guys don't trade biasly watch out for any false moves Okay, watch out for any false moves, false breakouts, false breakdowns and false breakouts are trade setups that we trade all the time, sheep style. But it will be especially important on day to days as like CPI and PPI. All right, let's move on to the triple Q. Holy moly. Oh, <laughs> I got to take a moment here because I'm just happy. Guys, it's not that I'm bearish. Please don't think I'm bearish and bulls if you guys... I'm not having a good time right now. I'm so sorry, okay? I mean that. It's just for me, you know, I just love to see the, the, you know, the plan and the action and the price action. It just plays out beautifully because, you know, we got the breakdown of this, you know, this triangle pattern yesterday. And today, it just so, showed some beautiful follow-through. That's a beautiful follow-through, guys. Look where it bounced, though. Around that 367 level, that's a 61.8 Fib level that I got here. We did close below, finally close below that 78.6 Fib level, which is at 369.5, okay? If you are a bull, those levels must be captured. 369.5, get back in the triangle pattern would be, we need above 371.8, uh, 373. Th actually, there's a gap fill at 373.8. All right, and then the critical 375.6 level, that's a critical FIB level, macro level, and I mentioned to you guys, bearish below 375.6. Did you trust the price action? It's not me that's telling you guys this. It's not me. It's not Uncle Charles, I swear. It's the price action. I, I You know, the price action said it. Below 375.6, it said to be bearish, and then I just translated it for you guys, and look how beautiful that is. Holy moly. Anyways, yeah, above 369.5, we need a recapture of that false breakdown setup. Recapture some more level, okay? Three, uh, yeah, 371.8, uh, gap fill at 373.8, and of course 375.6. We recapture those levels, I'd be bullish, targeting 377, 379, and 380.5, all right? Now, as long as below 369.5, stay bearish. I'm going to say that again. As long as below 369.5, stay bearish with the next support at 367. That held today. But if it don't hold tomorrow, holy moly, 365, 363.4, and 361 all in play. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm about to catch a stroke. Let me calm down. I got too much energy today, guys. So sorry. Dow Jones. Look at this Dow Jones. Holy moly. We got to talk about the Dow Jones. All right. It closed. Y'all saw that before I zoomed in. Let me, let me show you my fib level from all time high down to October 2022 low 78.6 fib levels at 351.76. Guys, did we close below that fib level? Yes, yes, we did. Let me zoom in. Yes, we did. We closed below it. So as long as below 370, uh, 351.76, uh, what's the breakdown of 351? 351 is a, uh, um, it's also a fifth level, but from a, a smaller trend. Uh, it's not as macro, it's more micro. So below 351 and below 349, I would be bearish. Three, definitely below 349, break down on my orange trend line here, okay? Below 349, I'd be bear bias with 346.5 and lower in play. You guys should already have the Dow Jones levels in your charts. But if you're new here, I got 346.5, 344.5, and 342.5, or 339 below that. For me... To be bullish, it has to get back above 351.76 and clear 353. Holy moly, clear 353. It's been struggling there. Clear 353, that will put 354.5 and 355.7 back in play. Above that, I got 358, uh, 359.3, and 361.2. In case 
in case we get a higher high, all right? We want to be pre prepared for a bull and a bearish action, okay? Inside daily candle for IWM, all right? The range of the mother candle is 193.29 down to 190.5. Let's keep this simple. Watch for the breakout of this range. Above 193.29, this bullish look to long with 195, 196.5. Uh, 197, no, excuse me, 197.6, 198.5, 200, and 202 above that. Now, the low is 190.5. So if that breaks down, that is bearish with 189, 187, 185.7, and 184.6 in play. Man, I hope CPI gives us some volatility. Holy moly, look at Tesla. Oh, man, it broke that. Listen. We recaptured that 249 level, the 23.6 fib level. What did I mention to you guys? Above it, bullish. Below it, bearish. It opened above 449, broke down 449. That was the bearish trigger. Went as low as 241.9. Ha! Amazing. All you need is price action. We didn't need no indicators for that. We saw the breakdown of the level and we just reacted sheepishly. Holy moly. Anyways, resistant right now is at 245 as long as it's above. 242, 240.7 is in play. Below 240.7, I favored the gap fill at 234.8 is. How could the market makers bring price this close to the gap and not fill it? I mean, they did it back in June, but holy moly, will they do it again? It would suck, but I hope not. All right, 240.7 fails. Watch for that gap fill. As of right now, 249 must recapture. I'm not going to go long unless 249 is recaptured with 254.5. 259, 261, and 263 in play. I'll be bull buyers above 261, all right? Apple, like I told you guys yesterday, it's been out of the uh, lower Bollinger Band on the outside. That's not necessarily a buy signal. It can be, but you have to combine it with the price action. But it's not always a buy signal. A lot of time it could chop and it could consolidate to correct itself through time instead of through a pullback or pullback to the upside in this case, a uh, dead cat bounce. All right, so just be careful. Resistant is at 181, 183, and 185. Okay, watch the false breakdown setup if you're going along. Above 185, I would be a little more bullish with 188.4 and the gap fill at 191 in play. All right, we still need the breakdown of this FIB level at 176. This 176 also happened to be August 2022 high. But we had strong selling pressure. So if we lose 176, boy, oh boy, will that be bearish with lower targets in play. 171.4, uh, one, uh, 170, uh, what's that, 168. I'm just looking at pivot lows here, 166.5-ish, and then 165. That's a FIB level, okay? NVD, oh, NVDA, NVDA, this is beautiful. Be oh man, did anybody look what I wrote in my Discord guy? I just got oh, it was just beautiful, beautiful. I give trade ideas in the trade ideas room. This is for tier two members and tier three members. For anybody wondering, is it worth it? Is Uncle's Discord worth it? Well, you tell me. Okay, I gave the trade idea this morning. I wrote as uh, for NVDA. As long as below 449, I am bearish on NVDA. How much more straightforward could I have been to you guys? Okay? And I wrote, for me, I will only look to long if 449 recaptures to put the higher targets in play. Okay? I would only look to long above 449. Of course, I'll play it level to level style. And I wrote, from here, look to short if 445.5 fail. Or 444. If you miss one setup, catch the next one, right? And look at that. We went at lowest 421.3-ish. I, I, you know... Life has been kicking me in the butt lately, but on days like this, I feel like I did a good job, okay? Now, personally, I'll tell you this. I did not catch the drop because, like I said this morning, I had to take my kids to the dentist, so, you know, daddy duties and stuff like that. But I did alert to the group. I mentioned to be bearish below 449. If you missed this trade, I don't know what to tell you. I don't feel sorry for no one that missed the trade. Why? Because I missed the trade, so I don't feel sorry for you. However... You miss one trade setup, you catch the next one. And I wrote to the group. From here, resistant is now at 425. And I had to put this in caps because sometimes people don't listen to me. I wrote, no calls unless this level recaptures to put higher targets in play, okay? 
No calls unless the 425 level recaptured. In intraday, it recaptured all right. I, it doesn't see it. You can't see it on this, you know, on this chart. Why am I going to the 45? Let's go to the 30. I trade the 30. Look at that. Look at that. Right there at the 11.30 candle, we recaptured 4.25, gave us a bounce going back high. It's 4.33.71. Almost hit my 4.34 target. That That's a beautiful $9 move. It, even if, I mean, it wasn't as good as this move. And I blame, I'm not going to blame no, I, daddy duties. I take the kids to the dentist. Um, but, you know, catching this move made me feel a little better, you know. And that's how trading is, okay. You're not going to catch it all. You're not going to catch them all, all right. You just got to catch a piece of the pie. Catch a piece of the pie. Secure the bag. Anyways, enough bragging. What's the next setup? What's the next level? Because this is pure dumpish. And with CPI coming tomorrow, will we get more dumpish? Holy moly. Support. Support's at 425. Some way, somehow, NVDA managed to close above that. It's dropping a little lower than that in, um, at the market. But... We'll see what happens at the open, all right? But definitely at 425 as a level. 420.5 uh, as another level. Break that down. 420.5, that breaks down. Holy moly. 418, 415.8, 413.5, and 410 is in play, okay? That's my next plan. Bears below 425. Bears below 420.4, all right? Let's not complicate this. Not rocket science, all right? Now, I got resisted. At 428, 430, and 431.5. All right? 428, 430, and 431.5. That's my resistance levels. Add them to your charts. If they clear, especially 431.5, look to long. Could be a nice move to the upside. 434, 438, 440, 442, and 444 would all be back in play. All you got to do is trade it un -bi 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 biasly. Oh. Got stuck there. Oh, look at this. Uh, Microsoft finally broke down that 1.382 Fib level. Interesting how we got this breakdown right before CPI, man. They got to make it so tricky, huh? But anyways, broke down 325. That's a legitimate breakdown. That is bearish. All right. 321.5 is the next support with 320. 316.4 and the gap fill at 314.4. They're all in play, okay? Can't get bullish unless... Uh, Microsoft gaps back above four, uh, 325. All right, above 325. Resistance at 327, 328.5, 330, 331.8 ish, and then 334.5. Those are my levels. Above 334.5, 1.5 Fib level. That would be bullish. I'll be bullish. Put in, uh, you know, let me see. Okay, 336. 338.4, 340, 341.5, and 344. They'll all be in play, okay? You guys got my levels? Amazon, look at that. Finally showing some selling pressure. Broke down 140. Interesting. All right, there is support uh, at uh, 136.5 to the 137 zone. If that zone breaks down, more bearish follow through. 134.3, 133. 131.5, 130, and 128.5 would all be back in play. I'll only be bullish if it can recapture 140 to put 142 and 144-ish back in play. Google, outside, daily candle. That's a bearish version, though. However, we need some follow-through. 129.5, fail, look to short. 127.7, 126.6, 125 Point nine ish. I will round it to 126 to 126.5 zone, okay? Uh, below that, I got 124.3 and 122.7. Overall, get bearish below 129.5. Uh, we get bullish above 132, but it'll have to clear 132.8. That's a fib level to put 134.8, 136.4, and 138 back in play. Meta. Ah, oh, man. We broke down that 309 level. You know, I, I mentioned to you guys, we get a waterfall drop if that level breaks down. And I'll favor the gap fill around, um, what was it, around 301. Well, Meta went as low as 302.85, so didn't quite hit my target. But hey, that was a very nice trade, in my opinion. Now, tomorrow, if 303 fails, 301 is in play. That's the gap fill. 
If if Bulls fail to get a bounce there, guess what? I'm a favorite 293 to be tested. However, before 293, let's not get ahead of ourselves. 298, 295, and then 293 would be in play, okay? Can't get bullish unless 309 recaptures to put 311, 313-ish, 315, 317.6, and 321 back in play. Netflix, big dump of that 437.5 level. I mentioned to you guys to look to short if that fails, and it worked beautiful. If bulls, uh, if bears won't follow through, it got to break down 426.5. If it does, look to short with 420, 415.3, and 412 in play, okay? Can't get bullish unless 432 and 437.5 both recapture the put. 443, 445, 448.5, and 453.5 all back in play. Here is AMD still showing some follow through. Uh, just, it, I mean, it closed just above 109.5. So if it wants to show more bears follow through, break down 109.5 and 107. For, for heaven's sake, break it down. All right? Because that would be very bearish. I'm talking about bearish directional move to the downside, okay? Otherwise, Look to uh, re uh, the look. Watch out for the recapture of 113. If that does look to long, with 115, 117, and 118.5 is all back in play. The VIX. I don't got much to say about the VIX. The VIX sucks. However, it might not suck tomorrow because of volatility from CPI. As long as above 15.5, stay bullish. Below 15.5 is bearish. Okay, guys. And there's the dog pool. We talked about that earlier this uh, in the video. Spy filter for 500k premiums or above. Let's look at the flows. What's big money doing with their flows? Uh, bearish for spy, bearish for triple Q has been pretty accurate lately. Dow Jones, uh, oh, bullish for Dow Jones. What? Uh, bearish for IWM, 50 50 for Tesla. They not, they're not sure. Barely bullish for Apple. Barely bullish for Apple. Barely bullish for NVDA. There's some indecisions here. Oh, okay. Bearish for Microsoft. Bullish on Amazon. Bullish for for Google. Be what? How is this different, guys? So Google, Google with the L is bearish. Google... Okay, okay, now we're going to have to look at it. Okay, so Google without the L is split orders. It's bullish, but it's split orders. A little over 2,000 contracts. Now, Google with the L got some sweeps and block orders, and it's bearish, okay? So I'm going to lean with the Google with the L because of the type of contract that was bought, okay? Google with the L. I'm leaning with that one. Meta, bearish for Meta, bullish for Netflix. Bullish for AMD and bearish for the VIX. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more content from Uncle Charters, please consider joining my Discord. Other than that, have a great evening. Peace.